Okay, and today I wanted to make a final video in the series uh, for corner play and just uh, do an analysis of the game. It's mostly going to be as a comparison to um, to edge rules, comparing uh, corner rules to edge rules. Why why the games are so different? Um, there's a really great article uh, that came out. Uh, I mentioned it before. Uh, by Michael Sandeman from uh, Abstract uh, Games magazine uh, in the early 2000s. Basically, it had also done a comparison between the two. It didn't. It didn't go into great depth. It mostly spoke about Toblet and as it was played on Branking, which is a it rules to of Edge Escape. And uh, when, when you when you play rules to the edge, you either have to have a weaponless king if he's surrounded on four sides, or if the king is allowed to take part in captures, then he should just be surrounded on two sides. And it basically was an excellent article because, you know, from the early 80s and 90s up to that point, so for a period of over a decade, uh, a new rule set that had came out whenever people started getting reinterested in the game. Uh, had come out with the corner rules, so the new rule, the corner rule set came out in the you know 1990s, and people thought that uh, that was that made for the, that was the only way to have a playable game, to make a balanced game, and the Sandeman article in Abstract Games magazine challenged that uh, conclusion, and and showed that when people properly know know the, how to properly play uh, with edge escape rules meaning they're using the right strategies, then it, it is actually a balanced game. And, um, uh, but anyway, let's, I just wanted to uh, do a comparison of um, the, the, the two rule sets. Um, right, what we're looking at right now is um, uh, Nefetop 11 by 11 with corner uh, rules. The king escapes to the corner. And this comes from an actual game on the internet played by two um, uh, very seasoned players of top and of this version, um, and one of the points that Sandeman made in his article uh, was that um, he he saw that when you play to the corner, then play becomes localized, and what that means is that it becomes concentrated to uh, very specific areas of the board. Um, this is a good example here. Um, of what localized play looks like, and you can see all the pieces have become localized on the perimeter of the board. I call I call this a ring around the board. <clears throat> um, not that it's bad, and the players didn't obviously they haven't made any mistakes. They're very good players. <clears throat> the it was actually this game was actually a draw from a perpetual check in the corner up here. Um, but as you can see, the kind of. The uh, in the the board interior is inconsequential, meaning it's out of all these pieces. There's I think maybe 29 on here. There's really only there's only one. This one right here that's not on one of the three outer rows surrounding the perimeter of the board. So you can see, you know, take a look at whenever you play this game. I want people to play this game. I want them to see see if uh, this was what happens in in the games that you play in this version. Because if you're playing it correctly. You'll see this happen. Um, I I prefer one of the reasons why I prefer edge edge playing to the edge is um, that um, it, you know if you saw in my series on tablet with edge escape rules the, the the board was the pieces were more homogenous the the uh, squares were there's an equal equality among all the squares. <clears throat> um, using all the squares here these seem to be kind of wasted in my opinion um you know i could i kind of joke around sometimes saying that you could hear cr kind of crickets chirping whenever you play here it's just it's just not and that's a really large part of the board um it's actually this right here this this whole part of the board is inconsequential that there's there's no consequence to playing there's 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 no there's no reason to play there um so again an edge top well, why is that? Because, see, in edge top, the king gets to the edge from anywhere on the board. But in this game, the king has to get to the corner when he's sort of pretty close. That's the way it happens whenever you're 
two people who know what they're doing are playing. Um, so the king, inf and when you play to the edge, the king influences the whole board, and his own men inf can influence the whole board from anywhere on the board. <clears throat> and um, so here we have this ring around the board that can happen. Um, the king can't get to the corner until he's reached an, the edge first. So all the pieces have to, they have to move there. They have to bet, they have to fight for the edge. So that, that, that's the reason why you're seeing all these here. <clears throat> um, and I also wanted to just take a, just turn the camera here quickly. Here's an, an example of a, a, a tablet game played to the edge. It's, sorry about the lighting. You can't see all the pieces, but there's about there's 19 pieces there, and only uh, four of them, 15 of them are on the outer two rows, are on the periphery of the board, and four of them are on the interior. So out of 19, 15 are on the perimeter, and this was also taken from a, a game on the internet. Uh, two very good players uh, playing the game. And, um, again, there's really, you know, nothing wrong or bad about that, but, um, it's just, it's just, uh, the difference between the two games. Um, although, I mean, I, in my opinion, I mean, if chess, if you wind it up with the same kind of pawn structure or piece structure in chess, if you were sort of guaranteed to have a, it end up a certain way every time, it, um, it just to me it just wouldn't be as fun but um but this 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 can be can be a fun game with these rules uh one other thing that Sandman said in his article was a really good point about playing to the corner um the difference and that is uh the pieces the mobility of the pieces is is uh, of the rook's movement is sort of kind of wasted is the way he put it the full power of the rook's movement is not Put to its full use, its full potential. What ends up happening is that, you see, the pieces, where whenever the king, you know, he starts up here, the, all the pieces move out. White's pieces move out to the corners where, uh, move out to the perim perimeter of the board where Black already has his pieces there, and he just has to kind of move them around a little bit. Um, so Black doesn't move his pieces all that much, very far, generally speaking and um so the king then the king finally starts to move to the make a big move to the corner and then they end up what ends up happening is that they have these little fights you know kind of these little you know two or three space fights where they're kind of um you know playing for position but they're, they're these they're really small little fights where they don't move around and it's only just a couple pieces and um uh so but in but when you play to the edge, really the full power of the rooks movement is used. You know, rooks are very powerful when they make the, the longer uh, flow, flowing movements there. Um, you know, and then once then either he either he's going to win here at the corner, you know, by getting a positional advantage, or he's going to have to leave, and he, he he leaves by shooting across to the to another corner because he has to be near the corner, and so. Then, then there's an, more little fights, and then, then he has to shoot across to another one. And that, that's what he means by localized play as well. All this play is just localized in these little corners. <clears throat> um, so every game kind of played sort of ends up looking something similar t to this, where, where the pieces are at the perimeter. Um, so there's not there doesn't end up to be a whole lot of variety in the game structure, but um, you know you don't have to look at that as, as as a good or bad thing. It's just it's just different. Um, you know, playing to the edge, the structure is a little more varied in my opinion. It's, like I said, it's more homogenous across the whole board. The placement of the pieces, the way they influence the board, uh, the pieces influence <coughs> around the board. Um, no part of the board, in my opinion, and when you play to the edge, is, is wasted at all. Uh, again, take a look at the um, series on tablet. You take a look at the pieces on the board and how, how they use the board. Um, let's see. The board isn't really segmented. 
Um, let's see. Also, a lot of times to me, and just in my opinion, uh, this looks seems to be a little overcrowded. Uh, I like to have the pieces spread out more. That's why I liked. I just my preference is playing to the edge. But again, you you don't have to share my opinions. Um, but uh, I just wanted to bring these uh, bring this, these comparisons uh, to light. Uh, also, in my opinion, the strategies just in this game, uh, while they're not totally, you know, stupid or um, dumb, you know, they 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 they, they can be complex. Um, the strategies just seem to me just a little more one dimensional here. Um, because once again, the strategy for both sides is to get to the perimeter. Uh, um, the attacks, except for kind of at the very beginning, uh, White can develop the board in different areas of the board. But you know, once the game reaches a certain point, the attacks are really just on one front um, because there are so many limited areas of escape. You know, when he plays to the edge, he has the whole entire edge, so he can the king can once again influence. Sever attack have several attacks at once in his men and that's that's what you want in abstract strategy games like in the game of go in the game of chess you, you want black to always address have to choose between two two options and at the beginning of the game that that happens but after a little while it goes away and it sort of never comes back um you know because he can only attack a corner you know it's rare that he's going to be able to attack two corners. They're so far apart. Um, so White has to play what's called an open game where all the pieces have to shoot out and become disconnected from each other, shoot out to the perimeter. He has to. He has no choice. There's no choice in the matter. Black has to play a closed game where the pieces have to stay connected and have to form a perimeter around the board. Um, and... Um, but it, when you play to the edge, you get to choose. You can, you know, some players are open game players. Some players on either side when you play to the edge. Some players are closed game players on either side when you play to the edge. You, you get to choose. You get to size up your player. If you know he's he's weak at an open game, you can play a closed game. You know, if you if you know your opponent's weak at a, you know, closed game, you play an open game. So it's... Um, or your own weakness, you know. You know, if when you're playing to the edge and you're you're you know you're weak at the closed game, then then try and shoot for the open game. Um, but once again, playing to the corner, you you really you don't have a choice. You have you have to play that way to win. <clears throat> um, we're gonna get to a, a different strategy later where you're trying to force a tie. Uh, when you're playing at a very high level. Uh, Pretty much White's goal, uh, almost where he has to he has to try and force a tie. <clears throat> um, so there's some strategies that are in edge toss that don't apply to playing to the corner, um, such as what I mentioned. You know, uh, playing different open or closed games. A choice. There's no. There's really no choice. Um, you know, and attacking two two things at once is a little more rare. Um, and once again, I'm not trying to badmouth the game. Uh, I'm just trying to compare the two I, and sort of get into more detail about what I think is one of the best articles ever written about uh, about top. Um, you know, there's no reason for White to create any pawn chains. Um, and you don't have to keep the king nearest pieces or the pieces nearest king on this because uh, the king can attack the corner by himself. And, you know, an edge he usually has to have... Uh, he always has to have two people help him, two of his men help him get to the edge. And um, this game, and not that it again, it doesn't make this game any worse. But um, remember, the corners can act as a, as another man, so he he can actually g get rid of pieces just by himself and get to make his own make his own path to the corner. Um, let's see, can you create two fronts of attack. Also, it's since. Open files are not as important in this version in playing to the corner as they are in playing to the edge. Um, you know, open file means there's there's no piece on it, and you want to try and get the king there. Uh, that's not going to benefit you as much. It it really has to be just only here, which is really 
um, you know, you know the, the the outer two the outer two rows. If those are open, then then you can try and move the king there, and you can try and open them up. But it's really not going to happen on the outer one. And this one, uh, it might if you're lucky. But so that that strategy kind of doesn't apply. And when you play to the edge, that's the key to the game: is opening up files and, and ranks and half open files and ranks. That's the key to the game. And this, it's 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 really not. It's also not necessary for Black to maintain one or two pieces on every rank and file. He doesn't have to keep that in mind because he's not trying, once again, um, because escape's not to the edge, um, he doesn't have to con control all the paths to the edge. He's just trying to, it's just the cor It's only the corners that matter. Um, his, his pawn structure, you know, making tripled and doubled pawns and things like that, it's, it's not as a big a deal. Um, or making pawn chains in this game isn't too big a deal. You're, you're going to have a lot of pretty good options just to capture just by keeping your men in a, in a perimeter formation. Um, and he also, uh, you know, check, check is just a lot, a lot different. It's, um, check and check mate and also the kind of the Tuichi um uh, and Rechi that uh w w was a uh important thing in Toblet it kind of doesn't apply and when you play to the corner because um you know his definition doesn't apply anymore because you know Tuichi is whenever you have it open when the king lands on when he said a king had landed on an open uh row you know, and then it's checkmate. But um, when you play here, that never happens. He's never gonna get on this back this back row when it's totally open. That just never happens. So, so the concepts that Linnaeus wrote about in the 19th century, I mean 18th century, <clears throat> um, that you know that they're lost, and when you play to the corner, you, they're just thrown out. <clears throat> anyway, um, I'm going to continue on. I'm going to have to make another video and um, just continue the discussion.